Okay. I'm just going to record this so anyone can see this. Okay, so right here, data series. So tick, this should be 610. 610. Until we're going to use uh, 10 days for now. Okay. Okay, so this one chart style, you will go to OHLC. Did you need to share your screen? Sorry. Ah, yeah, good, good point, Joseph. <laughs> Sometimes get so uh, okay, okay, okay. Sorry about that, Giancarlo. Okay, yeah. it's okay, it's okay. Okay, there. Okay, so this is what you should be seeing: six, ten, ten days. OHLC. Six, ten. Okay. Okay. And this, you can put this maybe all black, right? Ito. Yan. And ito, black. And mode should be HLC. Okay. Then when you click, you should have a, let me know, if, what's your background? Is it black like this? Oh, wait. I'm kind of lost. Wait, okay. I'm still there in the data series. Okay. Sorry. Days. Here, let me go back to data series. Okay. So data series should go like this. You should have 6, 10, 10 days, OHLC. Ten, ten days. Okay. OHLC. Black, HLC, and uh, this one go all the way down to the bottom mm -hmm. you'll see plot executions put this uh do not plot okay do not plot. okay and then press okay. okay now do you get a black background like this uh or iba you have like a gray background oh, it's black yeah black okay so you want to do if it's black you want to go click on the chart, right click on the chart, right click, and go down properties. Yeah. And then you want to click on this, uh, see this chart background? What yep. you want to do there is click this to, let's change this to maybe slate gray here. Go down all the way down here to, I'm looking for it. Um, here, dark slate gray. It's for the chart background, right? Right. So be, yeah. basically, when you click on that, you got it. Dark slate gray, right? You you click on that, yeah. and this one, right margin, you want to put this as maybe uh, one hundred. Okay. Okay. Press OK. Yeah. That's what you should get. Now, what you do next is basically right click on the chart again, go to indicators. Mm -hmm. When you click indicators, you should go look for what we call EMA. Scroll down here. You should see it's all in alphabetical order EMA. Double click on that until it gets down here. Okay, I lost it again. Okay. All right. Yeah. Go to indicators of your EMA, double click, that should be here, right? Indicators. Okay. Double click on EMA and should get down here on configured. EMA. And then press OK, right? No, not yet, not yet. Uh, we oh, want this yet. period. Period should be one. Okay. You can take this label. You can take that out. You can just highlight it and just delete. That should to be taken out. Now you go down here, the plots. 
click on EMA, make this black also. And this one you have dash style solid, pot style would be dot. And you wanna make this maybe either one or two. Let's make it, uh, let's make it uh, two. Okay, so you should have this. Uh, the label should be deleted, the label name. Uh, EMA should be colors black, solid, dot, and width is two. Okay. You okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, so fixing it. Okay. Oh, well, I can't press the plots. The plot. Here, yeah. so here, there should be a thing here. It doesn't let you press it. Yeah. That drop down, the drop down arrow. Okay, there, found it. Okay. All right. Okay, it's all black. Then dot. All right. Okay, then press OK. And this is what you should get. And you can shrink it like this. That's what you should get right now. Okay. Tama. Okay. Well, mine's blank though. Still blank. <laughs> but it's okay. I, I'll figure it out. But you should be nine six nine twenty one, right? Yeah, I'm nine twenty one. Are you connected to the to the data? No. So if you go here to control panel, control center, you should be connections. It showed you in your email, you should have got a connection here to configure. Did you see that? Playback connection, that one? Right, go to connections, click connected, connected Gaba. Or what? Oh, I'm not. I'm okay. Not. Oh, yeah, that's why. You need, they sent okay. you an email. They sent you an email how to configure this. So you may want to go back to that and maybe it's going to start plotting. Okay. All right. If you have any questions with that, you can always, uh, uh, in the chat, in the chat group, uh, you can um, send me your questions if you weren't, if you weren't able to get something like this. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay, so let's uh, start here. Joseph, how are you doing? I'm still getting the same error. So what they did was download the previous version. Let's okay. See if that works. I wonder why they why you're getting that. That's weird. What 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 do you, what what laptop? What you can figure is that a Windows 10? Windows 10, yes. And it should be paced out soon. <laughs> yeah, okay, Windows so 10. what? How much RAM do you have? Uh, hmm. How do I check my RAM? Go to systems. Uh, if that's Windows 10, you should click on here. Or go to, uh, okay, so you have this and then you go to, you should have this one. Go under settings, right? Okay. And you go to settings, go to. About where is about here? You know, here system right here. This is fine. System, right? And then go all the way down. You should see about. And then when you see that, it's gonna give you how much RAM you have right here. Uh, well, big. Oh, that's good. You have enough. So I don't know why it's not loading. Okay. 
we'll work on that later. Uh, maybe I can do a trade view with you so later. Okay. So, okay. So we're now going to start this regarding chart basics. Um, the first thing we covered uh, on the first day was basically the basics of what e-mini futures are and what ES is. And that's what we trade is ES. So what we're going to do now is going to do the chart basics. So there, there are many kinds of charts that a lot of traders use. Uh, the most common one is the time-based chart, meaning time-based. It's basically, it can be five minute, 15 minute, 30 minute, one hour daily and so forth. Meaning each bar will close every whatever five minute chart it is, or if it's a 15 minute chart, it's every 15 minutes. So that's what we call time-based chart. What we trade on is a tick chart. Basically a tick chart is volume-based chart or transaction-based chart. We use tick charts because it's a great way to see multiple opportunities in the market. To give you an example, each bar, let's say this one right there, this is a five minute chart. Each bar here closes every five minutes, right? And opens another bar and that bar will close after, after five minutes have elapsed and we create another bar. Whereas the 610 chart, each bar consists of 610 transactions rather than time-based. So 610 transactions, depending on the volatility, may occur in what, in less than a minute. Sometimes yeah. and if it's a slow volatility, it may take maybe 10, 15 minutes. Again, it depends on the volatility and the volume. That's why it's volume-based rather than time-based. So you can see here, go back to here, you can see there's a lot of opportunities to enter trades rather if you compare it to a time-based chart. A lot of traders use time-based. Sometimes I use it just to look at uh, the overall trend and so forth, but I enter trades in a tick chart. And the tick chart is being this 610 tick chart right here. So again, that's the, that's what, that's the difference between uh, a time-based chart and a tick based chart. Um, the 610 chart will be our main trading chart where we identify all our areas, meaning our, our, our um, support and uh, resistance areas, our momentum. We will, will be able to determine how strong our momentum is and general market activity. Uh, we usually have two open charts. I usually have Right now, when I trade, I usually have two open charts, but I, it's two different tick charts. One is a 610, and the other one is a 987. Uh, one with the indicators and one without. Uh, I also use a 610 chart that's bare, like this. I just want to make sure where the overall trend is, because usually when I have the indicators, it's basically more of a what I call a zoomed-in look, while this look is more of a uh, micro, no, macro look where it's zoomed out. When we say it's a macro look, it's basically a zoomed out look. While a zoomed in look, we call that a micro look, okay? So again, the 610 chart, and as I explained, uh, basically, it's basically 610 transactions per bar. And after the 610 transactions, a new bar will be created. We use what we call the HLC bars, high, low, and close. That's what it means for each bar. The last transaction of each bar is shown by a black dot. So for example, on this one, you see there's a black dot there. That's where the closing price of that bar is. As you can see, there's the, there is a counter here, but if you go to your, to your um, chart, in fact, some of you may not have it and let me know if you don't have that. Uh, where is my chart here? On my chart here, this is the one we just created. Let me just go to this other one. Uh, this one is a good one here, nine. Yeah, this one, 610 chart. And you see this right here, 202, we we'll see how it's counting down, 193. This is a live market right now. So that's 192, 191, that's your tick counter. So it goes down from 610 down to zero. Once it hits zeros, it closes that bar and then creates another bar. So each of this bar, each of these bars are 610 transactions each bar. Okay. 
Um, so you can see where right now it's 118, 117, 90. So watch this when it gets down to zero. And it's really slow. And right What's now- What's the significance for the number 610? That's a number of transactions. Why we use 610? Because it's a Fibonacci sequence. Uh, Are you familiar with Fibonacci's? Yes, rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> no, Fibonacci's are more human nature. It occurs in nature. So meaning human behavior. See, now we're telling us to go back to 610. It closed this bar and now it's creating another bar. The reason we use uh, the 610 is basically as a Fibonacci number, as Fibonacci sequence, and it depends. Each instrument, there's, for example, NQ, we may we use a different tick chart or basically a different tick chart. Some use a 144, some use a 987, or all, it all depends uh, how you trade on the NQ. But ES, we're using 610, mostly 610. Okay. So going back here, so. So <clears throat> let me get some water, hold on. So like I said, each bar represents 610 transactions. Each dot is the closing price of that bar. Okay, that's clear. Next one is basically, for example, in this one, you have the high of the bar, which is right here, the high. You have the low of the bar, and you have the closing of the bar, which is the dot. Clear? So there are two different windows that you will be familiarizing with. Okay, so this is basically the Ninja, basically this is what the Ninja Trader platform is like. So you'll see on here, this is what you have up here. And I'll show that you'll have the contract date. So meaning this is, we're trading ES, which is the S&P 500 index. This is the contract date. The contract date is important. It expires every quarter. So now we just recently expired the 621. We're now in the 921 exp expiration date, meaning it expires in September 2021. And usually when it expires, it's usually the third Friday of each month. Okay, third Friday of each month. So therefore, when this expires, you should have, if you can see my chart, it says 921. Okay, and this is the chart type. So let me go use this. Uh, my chart. So like I said, right here, 921 expires the third Friday of September. That's when it expires and rolls over to what? The December contract after that. So this rolls over every quarter. This is the, the type of uh, tick chart. So it's a tick chart. And this is the type of chart style we're using bars. So you can click on that. You have the candlestick. You have you can use the candlestick. We what we use is basically OHLC, more specifically the HLC. Okay, and this is basically the toolbar. This is basically all these icons are short for. For example, here's a drawing tool. This is very important for drawing tool. We use a lot of this. For example, you want to draw a ray. So you see a trend line. You can just do it like that. Or if you want to just do a horizontal line, you'll see this. You can plot it like that. You click on it, you press delete, or you can do uh, arrows, which we use a lot. Our students use this a lot. So like, let's say like this, right? Or you can use the text bar. Basically text bars, uh, text bars down here. And you can just say test. And you can just move this anywhere. Oops. And you can change the font and everything. Okay. Or you can also use uh, these eclipse. You want to highlight a point, or you want to highlight an area using a rectangle. Meaning, let's say you want to highlight this support level, all right? Or even this. Uh, resistance area, you use rectangle, just click on there and just go like this and there's your resistance area right there. Okay, 
And just to get rid of it, you can just go like this, click on that. You see the dot there and just press delete. Okay. And also you can use the ruler. This basically tells you how many points, like from here to here, right? So this is gonna tell you seven points. Usually when we trade, seven points equals in terms of dollars, you multiply that by $50. So seven, that's $350 movement from here to here is a $350 movement, okay? That means what, what's the, when you do that, it usually records it or shows it in points, not ticks, but points, okay? So you wanna delete, if you wanna delete the whole thing, you can go down here to drawing tools, right? Drawing objects, you can go do this, remove all drawing objects and just removes everything. On this side, let me get rid of this, wait, hold on. Um, this one, you have the chart trader. The chart trader is this one on the right here. It's visible right now, I can also hide it, okay? So all these icons up here are very, are shortcuts. For example, you just scroll over your, 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 um, your mouse. So as you see, you can do the cross arrow, which I have right now, or you can just go off and you just have the arrow like this. You do everything with this. So you have this one, show data box. It's gonna show you every single point at what price. For example, the last line, the last open and so forth. We hardly use this. Um, next one would be uh, that, like I said, here's the short try trader. We'll get to that. So I think we will, no, I don't know. We'll get that to that in this training session. But then here you have the data series. Remember before we were clicking on right click on the chart and you get data series like this, right? There's another way you can just go up here, scroll, find out what it is and you get the same thing. Here, indicators. So clicking here, right click on your chart. You can also get indicators and you'll get that. Same thing here. You click on indicators, you'll get the same menu. So that's more of a quicker way. Okay. This one's, I think, strategy. I think, yeah, strategies. Okay. So on this one, this is your y-axis or x-axis i always got confused anyways this axis right here is your price axis it shows your price this down here shows your time i have my time my computer time whatever your computer time is that's the time it's going to show in your chart for example i have mine on eastern u.s eastern time so in the u.s right now it's 7 38 a.m and that's what's showing down here the reason i have that because i can delineate between this is the, basically, this is the end of the market right here, right? It ended at 6, 4.15 p.m. Eastern time, 4.15 a.m. here in the Philippines. So now this whole area right here in gray is now considered as overnight trading time, which you can trade. But now it's already 7.38. This I consider as pre-market open. The market opens at 9.30 a.m. Eastern, and it's 9.30 p.m. here in the Philippines, okay? Um, any questions? No? Is the market 24 hours because there's overnight trading? Right, okay, good question. So basically the market stops at four, right here, you can see at around 4.15, it's, it stops. Then it reopens again at 4.30, 4.30 p.m. Eastern, but do not, you should be out of your positions by four o'clock. If uh, you should not be trading anywhere, even though market is moving, you should not be trading anywhere from 4.30 uh, p.m. Eastern all the way to 6 p.m. What happens is they open the market from 4.30 to 5.30 p.m. Basically, if you're, net, if you're in an open position in that one, your margin will be substantially increased to $5,000 per contract. Now, if you don't have adequate margin, what they do is they close out your position, okay? And uh, that's about it. So, and you'll be charged that amount. So I'll, I would tell you to get out of that position by 4 p.m. if you're holding a position or whatever. Uh, we're usually done within one and, a, one and a half hours. So basically we're done in the morning session. 
So these are people who are doing swing trading, like intraday swing trades. So anyways, this basically the market opens again at 5.30 p.m. Uh, should I say 6 p.m. Eastern or no, 6 a.m. Eastern, no, 6 p.m. Eastern, 6 a.m. here in the Philippines. So you can trade from that point on. So here in the Philippines, it'd be 6 a.m. all the way till 4 a.m. the next day. You can trade then. But usually the overnight session is usually a lot of what we call, um, um, what's it called? A lot of uh, the prices are very volatile. Okay, they're just all over the place sometimes. What we call, I keep on forgetting the term here, but basically uh, they are what, I keep on forgetting the term now. So anyways, they, they, they are basically um, very volatile. As you can see, look at the length of those bars. That's pretty long. Look at this. So you have one of these bars at least from this one, let's say take this one all the way down here. It's basically that's three points, that's a lot, right? So you have a lot of, uh, trying to think of that, well, we'll get to that. Um, so that's why I don't hardly trade the overnight session, okay? But good question, Joseph. So you can trade from anywhere from 6 a.m. Uh, here in the Philippines until the 4 a.m. until the next next day or next morning. So it's more easier to trade in the night market, exactly. assuming you have the cap higher capital. Right, exactly. You still have the margin is still 500. Same mm -hmm. margin as you do in the morning. Same thing. Okay. Did I answer your question? Yeah, I'm glad to know I can trade in the morning. <laughs> or even in the speaking. afternoon. Or even in the afternoon, you have the London market. Because why I don't trade the overnight market? Because the prices are so uh, volatile. What's the term I'm looking for? In fact, let me check here. I, I have it on here. Unpredictable? No, no. It's more uh, here. Let erratic? Me erratic. That's it. It's more erratic. Thank you. <laughs> it's more erratic. A lot of erratic behavior. Okay. It's harder to predict and make money. Yeah, exactly. Very hard. I mean, it's not that. It's just you have these long bars. This is what we consider as erratic bars. because They're so long as compared to look how short these bars are, right? Okay. Um, any questions regarding the charts? Um, they look like candlestick charts. If you just connect the previous close, with the current flows. Right. Well, candlestick is more, well, yeah, they, in fact, you can actually use uh, candlesticks on these, on this tick chart. So you can change this to what? Candlestick. And that's what they look like. So, ah, okay. But you prefer the tick chart. Yeah. But on the 987, I prefer a candlestick over a tick chart. So I, if I want to go back to a tick chart, I just go OHLC. HLC and goes back to that. Okay. I know close. So proceed. Any questions other than that? Okay. So basic charts, chart movement. So once you understand how something works, it's easy to do that activity. If you're driving a car and it breaks down, how are you supposed to know if the radiator needs water or or that you just need to flip a switch to keep driving because you know you know how the car operates your own car so the markets are very similar if you understand how how they work and why they move the way they do that you will have a much better success at becoming a successful day trade uh, day trader understand that the movement in the stock market is ruled by the decisions that people make mainly it's more on emotions have you noticed that when there is bad news, the market moves faster to the downside than when the market is going up? And it's very true. Why does it move faster? Because of right here, because of fear. As day traders, we thrive in a world of uncertainty, especially now when you have COVID and everything. When there's fear, people make rash decisions and the markets are more volatile and there are more opportunities to become very successful in the markets. In fact, 
I make more money when the market is going down rather than going up. Why? Because the market tends to crash a lot faster than when it goes up. Again, there are, the market moves in two different stages. There's trends and consolidations. Based on a lot of different variables, the market is going to either move up or move down or go sideways. Those are the three directions. Whenever we have a market that is moving up or down, we call that trending, like here. You see the market is going up, right? Even though we have a consolidation there, it's basically trending. For example, if I look at this market right now, what do I see? Shoot that there, there. What do I see here? It's trending down, right? Why is it trending down? Because you can see you have their lower, lo lower highs. So you can draw a ray right here from here to here. And what does that show you? It isn't going down, right? So now currently we are trending down. So it, it can either move up, like I said, it can trend up or it can trend down or move sideways in terms of what we call consolidation. Um, let me see here. So, Again, if uh, the market is trending, the upside is going higher and higher, or it can be trending that the downward is going lower and lower. Whenever we have the market moving sideways, we call that consolidation. Trends, uh, trends either go up or down, and consolidation goes in a sideways movement, okay? Now, there are three components of a trend. Mainly, they are the run, retracement, run, retracement and consolidation. Those are the three components of a trend. You can do the same thing when it's going down. Like here, run, retracement, even though you also have consolidation at the same time, run, retracement, and then run to the downside. And this one opposite, you have the run to the upside, retracement, run, retracement, run, retracement, consolidation, and then run. Okay, so the market will hardly move in a straight line because of the human aspect of trading. The one goal that I have for you is to be able to understand how the market works, because once we understand why the market does what it does, we're going to be able to adapt to any situation and make money in almost any market, consolidating market, um, uh, moving a market that's going up or a market that's going down. So with that said, considering that the markets are run by people and their emotions, we can understand the reason why the market never moves in a straight line. Since people's money and emotions are involved, there are constant feelings of angst, nervousness, and hesitation when getting in and out of positions. Like I said in the first question, ever wonder why the market moves faster when it goes down, when it goes down than when it goes up because of fear. Again, fear makes everyone act with quicker emotional decisions based on unreliable or what we call fake news. Therefore, whenever there's a crisis, there is twice as much volume or volatility in the market when it starts to go, flies down to the downside. Now, here's how I explain why, why the market doesn't go move in a straight line. For, for example, we have here on a, yeah, this is a bigger one. So let's say people who are buying, who bought here, right? Because they know they're, 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 um, I want to say bet, but they're, hold on, there's somebody's trying to get in here. Okay, let's say they, they speculate the, mark, the price is going to go up. So they're going to buy here. They bought here, just like people who buy stocks. They speculate the price of that stock is going to go up. So they bought here. And when they bought here, you, they finally see there's, it's going up. Most of the people who miss this, what do they do? They have that feeling of FOMO, feeling, feeling of me, missing out on that, especially people who are trading cryptos, especially in Bitcoin. So when they see it going up, they say, oh, sayang, I miss going yung, I know you move yon. But most of the people who bought here, what happens? They see the profit and what do they see? Once they see profit, they're gonna sell so they can cash in their profit. So when they sell, it creates this retrace. So now the, most of the people who, who miss this buy here will now buy on the dip. This is what we call buying on the dip. They bought here now. 
A lot of people buy here who missed out here will now create this price to go up. Once they see they see, they see some profit, what do they do? They sell to realize, to cash in in that profit. And what does it create? A retrace again. And most of the people who missed it here and missed it here will now buy again. Or these people who got out here, right, will now buy again here and get more profit again. And then once they see realize a the profit, they cash out. So that's the reason why the market doesn't move in a straight line. It's a lot of these people who are either cashing out in profit and then buying the, for those people who miss it down here or the ones who cash profit here and they speculate the market will still go higher will now buy and dip here and get more profit again. Same thing here. In terms of the downtrend, you have a lot of people speculating the price is going to go down. They're going to sell their stock at the high price. Remember what they say, sell high, buy low, right? So you're selling at the high price. So they got rid of their, out of their position. And so some people who didn't sell here will now sell here. Or and when you sell, you have to get out of your position, you have to buy. So what happens, it creates this, and buy. And then people are going to then sell more, the price will go down. That's why you see the price go down faster because a lot of people are usually selling because of their fear. Is that clear? Any questions on that regarding the three components of a trend? Any, nothing? Okay. So the reason why runs occur are because people think that the market is going to move in, in that direction. Remember that people put their money in stocks in order to make investments and make money. The faster and stronger that run, the more people are convinced that the market will move in that direction. Retracements occur. These are retracements, right? If we're going up, here's a retracement. Retracements occur because there are people getting out of their positions, like I mentioned before, and other traders assume that this means the market is going to move in the opposite direction. This is the fundamental reason why the market moves the way it does, rather than in a straight line. It's more like a step. It's almost like a stair step, right? So more like a stair-step configuration, you have you have these like steps, right? So by understanding this simple concept, we're going to uh, we're going to be able to take advantage of of, of the more complex movements uh, in the market and make money when other people can't. Okay, like I said, consolidations. That's where the market is going. No particular uh, no direction is basically just. Basically, what we call that is a speed bump. Consolidations are simply hesitations in the market. Think of them as a speed bump before a retracement or a run. Essentially, consolidation is when the market decides whether it's going to continue going in the same direction or go in the opposite direction. Remember that a move in the opposite direction is a retracement. Most of the time, a consolidation is simply a hesitation before it moves in the same direction. When you have these hesitations, it takes away from the strength of the market. And what I mean by the strength of the market is basically is, okay, you have the strong run to the upside, right? When you have a consolidation here, it takes basically the energy from this uh, momentum, the strong momentum going to the upside, takes it away. And the, the, the bigger the, the consolidation, the more energy it takes away from this up move, and most likely you'll have a higher probability where it might reverse, okay? So that's what a consolidation is. It takes energy out of that move. So when we have these hesitant, uh, so if you have a strong, very strong run and then, consoli and then a consolidation, the more that consolidation occurs, the less strength that we have. Like I said, the longer, the consolidation lasts, the more it takes away the energy from that from that move, and the more, uh, most likely, a higher probability where it re where it will reverse. So the more the more consolidation that develops, the more likely the market will continue going in the same direction, like I had said. So here are some consolidations, hesitations, right? So you have these regular consolidations. You can see when it move up, there's some consolidation. You see how it moves. And we had another run, small consolidation here. We have a larger consolidation here. Same thing here when you have this, where you see there's, you don't know where it's going up or down, but you see the overall movement is down, right? So these are like small consolidations or regular consolidations. I get here, run, 
then what happens is retrace, but this is consolidation right here. These are all consolidations. And continue to run, retrace, run, but before it continued going down, you had some consolidation, consolidation. So basically this run here is pretty weak because they have a lot of consolidations. It's not a strong run. It's just basically a weak run or what we call a regular run, really not that, that uh, strong. Okay. So again, AD here is just to see the direction of the market and identify whether it's moving up, down, or sideways. Any questions here about consolidations? Again, this is being recorded. I will be providing these slides in the chat room in the in the Discord chat room so you can go over the slides as well. Okay, consolidations. Any time that the movement is not uh, the market is not moving up or down, then we have a situation situation where the market moves sideways. Whether the market moves sideways for a second or two seconds or five minutes or an hour, moving sideways signifies that the market is not trending. You already learned about a very small sideways movement, content, like these are very small right here. These are small, right? Um, movement called consolidations, which typically occur inside of a run. As you can see, here's a run, right? Run, there's a consolidation there, continued run, retrace, continued run, but you have some consolidation there. So it's part of a run. Okay, a consolidation is merely a hesitation in movement before the market decides what direction to continue in. You'll probably find examples below of a larger consolidation where the market changes direction. Remember, like I said, stated before, consolidations absorb the energy and strength of the market. The larger a consolidation and the longer that it occurs, the higher probability that the market will reverse and form a retracement. For example, these are smaller consolidations here, right? This is a larger one. What happened was, we have basically you can tell this is kind of a weak run. It's not really a strong run. So you have consolidation there again, retrace, continued weak run, and consolidate their bigger run and what happened? It reversed. And you can see this run is kind of, it's not a strong run, it's basically a weak run again. You have some consolidation going on here and continue going down. Like here, you have a trend going down. What happened here? Look at this big consolidation. It absorbed all the energy that was basically going, making this down movement. It absorbed all that energy. What happened? It reversed. Now it's continue to trend upwards rather than downwards. Any questions on that? No? Because I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have you guys do an assignment. Make sure that you understand what I'm talking about. And this is the assignment. Uh, if you guys don't have on the, the thing loaded up, let me know. We, I can do a separate, um, team viewer where we can actually, I can help you configure your chart because this is basically submit three screen, screenshots of runs and retracements on a micro scale. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna provide another video on here. It's an overview of what we're talking about. And it's gonna ex thoroughly explain. In fact, let me see here. And this is what I'm talking about in terms of the video. Um, let me get to this. I'll include this video in the in the uh, Discord chat. So with this, you know how the market moves. So, and uh, here we are. Here we are. So this is the thing, chapter five. Here's the overview video that I'm talking about. So basically you click on that. I'll provide the video. This is for members who signed up for Gold Master class. Traders, this is gonna be a quick video review on our chapter on runs, retracements. So basically I'm gonna show you how you do that homework. Would be a See, the micro run, the macro run. Macro. So, 
I'll provide this video. It's basically the overview of what we talked about, right? And uh, the guy who's talking, is, his name is Jared. He's one of the other master traders in the US. So it's gonna explain how you do the homework here. What I want you to do, see how much you can do um, because it's gonna help you become like, for example, right here. Now here you can, you can here's one thing with this tip here. See this, you right click on the mouse and you can basically scrunch or squeeze together the chart. Even here, right click in the mouse, what happens? You can compress it, right? But if you wanna elongate it, you can also do the same thing. Same thing here, you can stretch it like that, right? Or if you just wanna move it, just go like this, you do it in the chart. If you wanna, if you wanna stretch it or compress it, you do it down here, right click on the mouse, compress it, right? And this is what you do. If you want to just move it from left to right, you go like this. And if you want to get back to uh, back to um, scale, what we call, you see this arrow, just go like this, or see this F when that show that F, it basically brings it back to scale like that. When you don't see that F, meaning it's in scale right now. But if you see that F, you'll see, like for example, this one. Just want to bring it back to scale. And you can see this, we scroll like this. Or if we move this up and down, what happens? You see that F, you can bring it to scale. Okay. So for example, if we're looking for runs and retracements, we're seeing uh, if we're going to do this see right here, is that going to run right now? So you have this and I can do it like this, right? So that's kind of right here. So what you have here, you can label it like this. Uh, you have a run, right? Run right there. Then you have a retracement. You use the arrow again. Where is that arrow? Right here. There's your what? Retracement, right? And then you have your run, right? So basically you run and you can label that using your text box, go like this, run, then you can put down retracement, right, and then run, and so forth. Consolidation can be right here. And you can mark that as consolidation by either a rectangle, because you see this right there, and mark that as consolidation. So you have your run retracement, run, kind of a consolidation there, retracement, run, and so forth. And just mark those off, right? So you know. And this is a bigger, do you see this? This is more of a bigger consolidation that's going on right here. Right there. That's a bigger consolidation. But instead of reversing, it's still continuing going up. Okay, any questions on this? None? Are you guys falling asleep? <laughs> no questions. No questions. Okay, no questions. Okay, that's clear. So what uh, I showed you here is basically, this is what you're gonna be doing. And I'll provide this video to explain the overview. It's gonna, he's also gonna show you how to do these, this, these assignments. I'm just a really, in terms of screenshots, you can do a, a clip. In fact, I think one of the, when I included that, it showed you how to, download one of it's uh, basically called I forgot the name by tech by tech uh, what's I'm gonna call it you can find it here by TechSmith it's called not snag it there's another one they called it I forgot I forgot what it's called I know it's in that video that I sent you but you can use that to take um, screen caps uh, captures right? Like most of my students here, we see here, 
they take this, like for example here, here's a student who takes uh, snapshots, right? With screenshot of his trades. And before you were doing most of this other snapshots. Okay. Or there's another on Windows, you can do a snip, basically a screenshot of it. Basically, and basically that's what you do. And submit it into our chat, uh, Discord chat. Okay. So make sure that you understand what we're talking about. Because this is the basic of basically what price action is. You understand where the trend is, you, you see the retracement as well as the consolidation. Okay. Any questions? I guess we'll stop there for tonight. Friday we'll be discussing, I think, momentum. Let me see where we are on here. Uh, yeah, we'll be understanding more momentum. Let me see here. Now we can find my screen, okay. So any questions? Uh, nope. None so far. Okay, I think uh, Kai. I think you took the you 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 understood this when you took when you went with your mom the first two days, right? We were discussing this, I think. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes, I got. So it's another. It's like another review for you. Yes. <laughs> okay. Good. Okay, so I'm gonna end it now. And uh, again, this is being recorded. I'll upload this to uh, Joseph. Any questions? I think should be. You're welcome, um, I John. Think, I need to install it as admin. I will try later to install it okay. as admin. Maybe yeah, let, no okay. let me know Maybe if you have I'm, yeah, if you have any issues regarding uh, installing the platform or anything or configuring your, your chart, let me know in the in the in the group chat in Discord and we can do a uh, separate uh, uh, session where I can help you configure it. Okay. For the church, is there an advantage for the HLC over the candlestick? Yeah, you see more of opportunities of entering. Uh, that, but that's for later. Topic. Right. No, it's because I, I discussed it. But you see more. You are. You see more of opportunities to enter a trade rather than the candlestick. Okay. Uh, uh, they tend to digest. Yeah. Okay. okay. Okay, so I'll see you guys on Friday, same time at 7 p.m. And uh, on that, enjoy your evening. God bless. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, Tom. Good night. Bye-bye.